My name's Rob Cass. I'm a professor in the Department of Statistics, in the Machine Learning Department, which is in the School of Computer Science, and in the Center for the Neural Basis of Cognition. One of the most important things that can be done to advance science is to improve methods for reasoning from data. But that's what the field of statistics is about, and so that's what I decided to study. I was really a theoretician for the first half of my career, but eventually I went back to my lab roots and found my, what really became my true love, which is neuroscience. Brain-related illness, illnesses include not only things like schizophrenia, depression, autism, and attention deficit disorder, but also drug addiction, uh, certain visual impairments, diseases of movement, such as Parkinson's disease, and chronic pain. To find really effective treatments for these illnesses, not only pharmacological interventions, but also behavioral therapies, and to differentiate good performance from bad performance, or slow learning from fast learning, we have to understand the interactions of neural signals across networks under changing circumstances. An essential part of this effort is developing ways to say how a particular set of experimental results is able to inform us about changes in neural network connectivity. That's the part I'm interested in. That's the part I'm working on. My research has mainly been about characterizing the way neurons represent and transmit information through their firing patterns. And this has been informed by uh, firing patterns that are recorded from experiments by my experimental colleagues. Currently, my main interest is in the way neurons work in concert in networks within and across brain regions uh, in order to enable a, an, a human or animal to successfully carry out a task like reaching to pick up a cup or in the case of a rodent to poke his nose through a hole in order to get a piece of food as reward. The technology for this has been advancing rapidly and the number of neurons that can be recorded simultaneously has been growing exponentially fast. These kinds of experiments can generate billions of data points and the number of theoretically possible network interactions is immense. So it's really essential for any description of brain network activity to be able to handle complexity and also to include statistical assessment of reliability. My colleagues and I have recently devised a statistical framework for protecting against false discovery that works well in a key setting where the connectivity across neurons depends on known measured factors such as the distance they are apart. We very much want to exploit the insight we've gained in that context to, we hope, build a comprehensive set of methods for analysis of brain connectivity under changing conditions.